Howdy y'all, I hope you guys are all doing well. I hope you guys are safe and I hope you guys are healthy. My name is Josh and if you are a returning subscriber, thank you guys so much for being subscribed. It really does mean the world to me. And if you are brand new to my channel, I make clothing related content. And if you like what you watch, feel free to subscribe to my channel as well. So today I'm gonna to be talking about three types of laceless shoes. So over the last couple of years, uh, these three shoes have been huge and only getting bigger as the years go on in the streetwear or like kind of street fashion uh, type of communities. And so I wanted to talk about loafers, mules, and clogs. All three shoes are absolutely amazing and actually a ton of fun to style and so I'll show you guys my pairs, my small collection of pairs, as well as how I style them in the different type of outfits that I wear on the day to day. So first and foremost, the first section of this video is going to be about loafers and the most traditional example of a loafer that I have is going to be this right here. This is a pair of GH Bass Weegens. I don't know if I said that correctly at all, but this is the most kind of uh, iconic style of loafer. This has kind of like a moccasin toe here. It's a penny loafer, so this has this little strap going over the front. Penny loafers, the little story about that is that a long, long time ago, people used to keep a penny or a coin in the front portion of here and basically use that for like an emergency if you need like uh, if you need a payphone when payphones existed back then um, it has a closed back it has a tiny tiny little heel here and this is going to be basically the most traditional loafer that you can find around you can find these just about anywhere any and every single thrift store across the US and honestly this is just a classic shoe so yeah mine's obviously in a two-tone black and white this is really nice I actually wear these at like job interviews and stuff it gets a little bit of tension because it pops a little bit and um, I do very much love this shoe right here I was able to find these at a Goodwill for I think less than ten dollars and so I just got really lucky they were practically brand new and they have a leather sole with a rubber sole at the back heel so yeah, very, very nice pair of loafers. So the next pair of loafers that I wanted to show you guys are a little bit less traditional, and it is this one right here. For the life of me, I cannot pronounce the name of this brand, but I love this loafer. It is kind of this greenish brown and black loafer. Of course, it has a heel as well, a little bit higher than the other one. Um, this one has a sole on the front. I don't typically like leather soles because I tend to slip around in them so it has a rubber heel as well as half sole on front. So this one has, if it'll focus, a little bit of brogue detailing on the toe. What I know of this brand is it is a smaller avant-garde brand and this pair looks pretty great it's super plain but when you kind of get up close and look a little bit closer you see all the detail shine through in this one and the really cool thing about this pair is that both sides aren't symmetrical whatsoever the coloration is completely different and so they just look straight up interesting to me the next loafer is probably the least traditional loafer out of the bunch, but it is this pair right here. This is a pair of Margiela Tabby loafers. These are cool. There is like no way around like how interesting they look. That split toe is just so cool to add to an outfit. It adds a detail that not many other shoes can add to your outfit. Uh, they are pretty worn. You can kind of see the Margiela branding on the inside there. And I did add a rubber sole at the bottom. Again, uh, these come with just a leather sole and I don't like slipping around, so I added this rubber sole to it. Um, but I will say, if you are looking to get a pair of tabbies, not just the loafers, but really any other tabby, you are going to have to wear tabby specific socks. If not, just go barefoot, but a uh, really cool looking shoe, but it is a little bit of a commitment because you have to buy certain socks when normally you would just wear any sock for any shoe. But this tabby is really cool. I've had these for a couple of years now. Um, you can see that iconic little stitch at the back heel. Um, you can kind of fold down the uh, back portion and then make it more of a mule of which I'll explain a little bit more later, but you have that option to just 
push the back side down and it can just be a true slip on shoe. All right, so the next category that I wanted to talk about are mules. Mules are awesome. Some people don't like them because they're not very secure on their foot sometimes, but this is a mule and what I would consider to be the most traditional form of mule. So this is just a closed toe shoe with no backing. It's simply just a slip on closed toe shoe. And right over here, this one is from Hender Scheme. I don't know if you can see, but their branding is those little nails right there. And you can also, mine's worn, so you can't really see the branding on this one. But this one is kind of modeled after a Western shoe. And so it has that like cowboy boot stitching on the toe right there. Absolutely beautiful pair of shoes. I've been, I, before I got this, I was looking for this exact pair for quite a while, but this mule is a ton of fun to wear. It's, you treat it like a slipper, but it looks so much more sophisticated than that. And that just makes it so much more interesting. And so that's why I love mules. It has this look of formality while not having the like, you know, laces or like any busyness going on. And so, Hender Scheme mules right over here. Another mule that I'm not gonna talk too much about because I showed this off in another past video is this right here. This is going to be a Doc Martens mule. This one is made in England. The upper is suede and it has a back strap. So the big thing with mules, at least in my definition of a mule, is that it is an open back. This still is an open back, but it just has the strap to keep your foot in. And so still I classify them as mules. Lastly, another shoe that I've shown on the channel before, this one is going to be the least traditional form of mule. This one right here is going to be the New Balance and Tokyo Design Studio collaboration. This shoe right here is interesting. Uh, you don't usually see uh, hiking shoes or athletic shoes in mule form. It's actually been done more. I know New Balance has done pairs now, or they have in the past, and they kind of reiterated that now. But um, these mules are really cool. They're super comfortable, really easy to slip on and off. You just treat them like a slide, and that's kind of the beauty of mules. And yeah, this is the New Balance version. I did an entire review on this shoe in the past as well. This one is a convertible shoe, so you basically can make it a high top or a mule, which is awesome. But uh, yeah, this one I really enjoy just because of the comfort and the ease of access. Lastly are going to be clogs. Now clogs are a very, very interesting shoe. They really didn't gain a whole lot of popularity until fairly recently, I would say in the past year maybe two years in the streetwear world people have been wearing clogs for ages and ages and ages before that but clogs as far as i'm aware are shoes that are classified by having a wooden sole and this right here is my first pair of clogs this i got fairly recently um in this is a brain dead clog i don't quite remember the actual name for the clog itself but this was surprising. When I walked into the Brain Dead store, I was like, these caught my eye immediately. When I asked them the price, the price was actually less than I was expecting because usually any brand that does footwear will kind of, especially footwear that's solely branded as like their own brand, like this is just a Brain Dead clog. As far as I'm aware, it's not a collaboration or anything. Tend to be pretty expensive. This one was 220, which is super doable and this clog is so, so, so nice. On bottom, we have a Vibram Lug sole. Already has me sold because I don't have to get them resold immediately. It has this kind of dark brown, almost black wooden sole right there. Moving up from that, we have these studs that are just attaching the upper to the midsole right over here. And the upper is interesting. This is kind of like a rubberized leather. This is like rubbery and it has a texture to it. It has this strap at the back. So yeah, clogs are really interesting. I wasn't 100% sure if I really wanted to grab this pair just because it looked so different than what I was used to. And they feel really different. Wooden soles just feel so weird at first, but um, I actually learned to love them. It, it was really cool because this is like one of the only shoes that I saw in person and was like, you know what? It caught my eye, it's so unique. 
I'm gonna give it a try. And yeah, that is the brain dead clog. So that's my little collection of loafers, mules, and clogs. I really like these, especially for hotter weather because of ease of access for all of them. They're super simple. Whenever I wear a boot, I'm always struggling to like, you know, it takes like a couple of minutes maybe uh, to like put on an entire boot. But then for clogs and loafers and mules, it's just a very, very quick slip on process. And so I want to know what you guys think of these classifications of shoes. Do you guys like them? Do you dislike them for whatever reason? I would love to have a conversation with you guys down in the comments below or through my DMs. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate your time and until my next video, I'll catch you guys later.